Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77. Today, we're going to build a melon and pumpkin farm that is automated. And it's going to use flying machines, and it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be kind of cool. The big goal here, though, is to make a machine that I kick off with a switch or a button, not something that runs automatically all the time, because I want this to be server-friendly. I don't want to lag out the server if I forget to watch it or something like that. So we're going to start to design this and work on this together. And the first thing I think we're going to work on here is we're going to work on the output side of stuff, the pickup system. And the first thing that I want to do is I really want to get down a series of filters so we're going to put in a couple of chests here these are for the various items that we're going to be storing which will be like pumpkins on one and melons on the other and this is the output line of that okay so that's where that stuff goes now on top of here i'm gonna put some blocks i'm just talking through this we're just going to build this together and we're going to have this is the filter system right here okay so what you want to do is you're going to put some blocks Let's see if i can do this here and we're going to put the comparators here this is just a note where that is this is the typical filter system you've seen many times, okay? And of course, redstone all over this. And then we're going to have a couple more blocks and repeaters here, and I need to get some torches. So we're gonna grab some redstone torches here. There we go, I probably won't need the redstone very much anymore. And we put the redstone torches here and the other side. And this is the basic filter circuit. I will show you and put a link in a card to this filter circuit up right now. Okay, now we're going to put in the filtered items here. I'm just using stone. And we want pumpkin in one. Let's grab a stack of that and some stone here. Okay, and pumpkin. Grab a stack of that and melon, of course. And that way it should uh, work the way we want. Okay, so this is the pumpkin side. And we put this right here, and it should go all the way down to 41. Meanwhile, while it's doing that, we're going to get this right here and put this all the way down, and it should also go down to 41, which is, changes the signal strength from the comparator, and there it goes, and it stops. And this is then filtering out all of the pumpkins, and this is filtering out all of the melons. Okay, so this part is working fine. The next piece of the puzzle is the overflow system. We're going to have hoppers that are going to be going across this up here, and I want to go out a couple more, so let's put some blocks up here and then right here I would like to have a dropper this is the dropper that will drop the items down into I don't, into a, like a lava source or something like that so that we can destroy items and this will go in this direction so this is our line coming across here this is feeding over to here if it gets to here I want to overflow and drop that down into lava like I said so let's build that out right now let's put a block down here okay and we're going to put another block here. That's kind of like the bottom of where the lava will be. Okay. And we'll put lava right there. There we go. Now, if items go into here, we want it to drop stuff into there. So let's get some glass really quick here. That way we can kind of see what's going on and don't have to worry about things shooting out or whatever. So there we go. We got glass. And we can see that now. We're going to basically right here, we're going to put a block. Not a dropper. A block. And a comparator, okay? And then I want to have a sticky piston right here. Facing upward. There we go. And I want to have on that an observer facing that direction. And on top of this comparator, this is a little tricky here. Um, I'm actually going to put a block on top of this real quick. A An observer facing that way. It's a basic circuit that will then trip every time it needs to uh, destroy something. So now if I put this glass up here, there we go. So as an example, if, I, if something like this glass gets put into the dropper, it gets dispensed and drops out into the lava and gets destroyed. So that is the overflow protection. Next, we're going to do the minecart rail system for the pickup. Now, I'm going to use hoppers for this. You could use some sort of system where they drop from hoppers into a water stream, which then runs across this line. But I'm just going to use hoppers for this demo because this is not going to be too big uh, for this particular tutorial. So we're going to have on top of these four that I just put here, powered rails. And then in front of that, you're going to have right here, this row will contain regular rails. And then we need to go right here and put some more power rails. So I'm going to go out eight more. I'm going to put a redstone block that's going to power these rails. So if I do this right here, you can see all of these will get powered. But if I put one here, it's not because it's eight distance. And then there's that one right there. And again, we're going to have a rail there and we're going to put a powered rail here. And I'm going to go out eight more here on this side 
And then on top of here, I'm gonna put a block that's just one out. And that's the block that the minecart will bounce back upon and come back over here, okay? So this is the length of the farm that we're gonna do for this tutorial. Let me fill this out. Now that we have the rail set up, we need to get a dispatching system and I want this to be uh, triggered by myself. I don't want to be uh, working where it's automatically dispatches and keeps running all the time. So I'm gonna put some blocks here. I'm gonna put on top of each of these rails here, a hopper minecart, just like that. Okay, there they all, they're all ready to go. Now here I'm gonna put four pieces of redstone dust. I'm gonna go out two more blocks. I'm gonna put a repeater that will strengthen whatever signals here. And for now I'm gonna put a lever and when I run this, they all are dispatched and I turn it off and they'll come back and they should stop. Now this is kind of like the line that I will be keying off of later on when I get the whole system together, which does the flying machines and other things. Whatever signal comes in, it'll come in through this line to dispatch these minecarts. Okay, so now that we have this, what we have to work on next is we have to get the actual setup of the farm. So on top of these rails, you're gonna have some dirt and I'm gonna put that down right here. Uh, there we go. And you can imagine this is the dirt. This is the main part of the farm. So I'm gonna build this out really quick. And now that that's built, we need to basically make a water source so that we can hydrate this land. So I'm gonna go out here just a little bit. I'm gonna go down and out, out like that. So we're gonna make a, like a little uh, trough or a tunnel here all the way down. And there we go, just like that. And we're gonna fill that up with water. And that will be used for, like I said, hydrating the soil that's there. So let's fill this up with the water real quick. There we go. And then we need to use the hoe on these blocks to, for, to make the uh, pumpkins and the melon seeds. Now you can do it all of it at once or you can just do like a checkerboard pattern. Either way is fine. But what we're gonna do is we're going to plant on one row here. This will be like melons. And we'll then do pumpkins on the rest because you get a lot more melons for uh, the same price. Okay, so we're gonna do some pumpkins and some melons and you're gonna do the entire farm that way. Now we're gonna put the slabs in that go above the farm itself, okay? So you wanna go up at least a block. You're gonna have a block there. I'm gonna go over here just a little bit like that. And this is kind of a placeholder block and we wanna put the slab on the upper side of this, okay? And then right now we're gonna cover up the entire thing and then we're gonna take out blocks. Let me cover it all up for you. The flying machine that we're gonna build in a little bit is gonna push these slabs down and break the melons or pumpkins. So we don't want it to break where we have the seedlings done. So we need to take out those blocks. And again, this is a checkerboard pattern. So let's do that now. The next thing we're gonna work on is getting the trigger mechanism that will cause the flying machine to fire. So we gotta make some space for the flying machine. So right here, I'm gonna go up two blocks and we're gonna go out six. And this kind of area, these six blocks is where the actual flying machine will be. Okay, and then on this side here, we're gonna put another block and I'm gonna use an immovable block. I'm gonna use red uh, obsidian and I'm gonna put redstone dust on that. And so I'm gonna do that for all four rows because this is gonna be a tileable machine, just like that, okay? And that's the line that will actually kick this whole thing off, okay? And then I'm gonna put one more and just like down there for now, I'm gonna put in a repeater and then another block. This will carry the signal that will work that out and get that to move, okay? So that's the next part. Now let's try to build up this flying machine. So now we're gonna work on the pistons that will push down these slabs to break the melons, that part of the flying machine. So what you wanna do is you wanna go up here too and then do your two by four array here. We're gonna work on that. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna put observers facing upward into those so they're looking upward. You see the little red dot is pointing down. That's what you wanna see, okay? Now we're gonna alternate rows here. We're gonna put two slime, two honey, two slime, and two honey blocks, okay? And then finally, we're gonna put the sticky pistons that are facing downward. I guess I might have bumped that. We're starting up some <laughs> hopper minecarts. There we go. And this part is the system that will break the slabs as they move, not break them, but actually push them down and pull it back, which will break the melons. And you can now take off that portion and there we go that is ready to go for that part so now we have to get this all hooked up into the actual flying machine portion of this mechanism so we're going to do over here we're going to take out these blocks and we're going to have to have a way of putting the two machines together so we're going to do that right here this these columns here of honey and slime blocks kind of join the two systems together okay and then off of those you're going to want to put your sticky pistons going like this and then you're gonna to want to go ahead and put slime blocks and honey blocks and alternate that just like that. 
Again, you're trying to make sure that your honey block rows and your slime blocks are, are in the same rows and not getting uh, mixed up. Okay, so then what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to put an observer like this. A little slow walking on this stuff here. And then you want to put a sticky piston like this. Okay, and then in this block here, you're going to want to fill this in with the slime or the honey block, whichever one it is. And now we got to do one last portion. We got to have an observer facing upwards. So what I do is I go ahead and put this right here. But now you notice we can't get under there very easily. And so what we're going to use, we're going to use a trap door. Now with the trap door, you can actually go under it, which will make it a lot easier. So we'll go like this, go over to one and go like that. And that makes you kind of like you're crawling. And then from there, you can put the observer facing upward. So just gotta go under here, get to the right point, and you can do that. And there we go. And then you can get rid of the trap doors and these blocks right here. And that is the entire mechanism ready to go. This observer, when it kicks off and sees this, will cause this piston to start the process. And then on the other way back, this one will cause it to go the other way. The next step here we're gonna have to work on is we're gonna have to work on building this out and getting the return mechanism so that it'll all work together. We next want to work on the other side, which is where we have the return mechanism. And we want these two pistons to go past all of the slabs, okay? So we're going to do this over here. This is kind of like a placeholder block. And these are the two blocks where those pistons will end up at the end, okay? So then on the end here, we're going to go there. And I'm going to go up two more. This row right here, this is where the machine will stop. That's what we have to place there. We don't need these anymore. So imagine that the machine is stopped right up against here or it's coming across and it gets here. We need to see that. So we're going to put an observer here facing into this block. Okay. So when the machine comes in here, this will fire. Okay. Now place two more here going this way, two going this way. And then you want to go two up like this and then one that observes here. Okay, and when we have that, now we can have the signal go into a repeater and some blocks. That's five blocks right there, and we're going to have the repeater. We're going to put it into a two ticks there, and we're going to put down the redstone dust. Okay, so when a block happens and hits, gets put like placed over here, let's say the machine arrives, I'll put a block in front of it to simulate that. It'll come over here and it'll light the signal, which will tell that top observer to start the machine going the other direction. Okay. And so um, that looks like that's good. We have to also put in, I forgot, I almost forgot, the observers that face into this here, okay? Because those observers will see that right there. Okay, so let's use this mechanism right now and see if this works. We're gonna put a lever right here. When I throw this, it'll these observers will see this signal and the machine will start going across. It will then, this piston will, will push down the slab and then when it moves forward, it'll push down the next one while the second piston will pull the slab back up. Okay, so here we go. The machine is working. You can see it's gonna break these pumpkins right there. And it should get right into here and then go back. And there we go. Excellent. And when it gets all the way over here, let me turn this off. It should stop. And the machine is reset and ready to go. Excellent. Now we have one thing left to do, and that is when the machine arrives over on this side, I want to send a signal over here to have the hopper minecarts dispatch and pick up whatever's been broken. So you want to basically get rid of this block here. We don't need this anymore, and we're going to put right here a slab, and we're going to run this all the way down this direction, okay? All the way past all of these. I've been going too fast. And you want to go underneath right here, so we got to do one more, okay? And basically then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of redstone dust right here and then put observers all the way down to this, okay? So when that signal happens, this redstone dust will get powered and then we're gonna put a repeater here. I also put a repeater right where the redstone block is in line with that and we're gonna put a bunch of redstone dust here. And then you wanna put redstone dust all the way down to this repeater. And then I just put the, this repeater on maximum ticks. So now the machine will get over there. It'll send a signal back here, which will cause the hopper mine carts to go and do the pickup. Let's give this another test. Here we go. You can see the machine is breaking this thing. So that's good. These pumpkins are going. And it gets over here. The signal line should come over. And the mine carts are dispatched. They will then come back with everything that they've picked up. And then those items, those pumpkins and those melons, are put into here. 
Excellent. So this machine is working fantastic. So this machine is great. You can see that it is tileable. You can just stack these side by side. You have to put, you know, extend the line here, extend each of these lines. You can also extend the length of this. So to make sure it can go really long. You can make a mega farm if you want, as long as you put this mechanism at the end. And then of course, boost out the signal all the way back. So this farm is, I think, complete. This machine is complete and it works fantastic. Now this is in the Java version of Minecraft. This could possibly work in Bedrock, probably not right away, but with some small tweaks, you might be able to get this to work. I think the trickiest part probably will be the flying machines. And I will try to work on that in a later date. But for right now, I need this design for my single player world on the Java server. So I'll probably be building that coming up very soon. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got time for. Hey, if you like this video, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them down in the comment section. And if you'd like to be notified of the videos that I produce, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get all of the notifications. Okay, guys? Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.